Blog Talk Radio. Good afternoon again. This is Tim J.K. with Apple Capital Group. Pleased to have today on the broadcast is Mr. Weldon Long, who is the founder and chief executive for The Power of Consistency, his new book. I'm going to play an introduction real quick about Mr. Long, and if you can bear with me about 40 seconds, and we're putting Mr. Long online. Mr. Weldon Long is a successful entrepreneur, a warrior, and an author, and a powerful speaker who have thousands of organizations consistently to improve sales performance. He is an author of The Upside of Fear, one of the 2009 New York Book Festival and the 2011 Writer's Digest International Self-Published Book Awards. The book has been endorsed by international best-selling authors Dr. Stephen R. Colby and Tony Robbins. Mr. Long has been featured on numerous national and regional television programs including Fox News Network, First Business Network, and Chicago's very own WGN. Mr. Long is also the creator of Power Consistency for Sales Excellence, which he has been successfully used to help hundreds of companies and thousands of sales professionals radically improve their sales results. In 2009, his company was selected as one as one of Inc.'s magazine's fastest growing private companies in America. Mr. Long holds a bachelor's degree and an MBA in management. He is honored to have several of some of America's finest companies, including Franklin Colby Organization, Tom Hawkins International, Exodia, Wells Fargo Bank, Prepaid Legal Services, and Cara Bryant Corporation. Let's please welcome Mr. Welcome Long. Thank you for the programs. Thank you. I appreciate it again. Again, it's an honor of having you here. Never had a great speaker like you to follow. But let's begin with, I guess, talk about yourself. How you guys started? I mean, you have a long history. And I guess if you can bring us forward from what you started from in the past and tell us about yourself and bring us to where you are today. Sure, Jim. I really appreciate you having me and it's a pleasure to talk with you. You know, my story really begins in 1987. At the time, I was 23 years old, and I was actually homeless and a drug addict. And in 1987, I was out drinking and running them up one night in Denver, Colorado, and ended up committing a robbery and spent the next 15 years in and out of prison. Back between 1987 and 2003, I spent 13 years behind prison walls. Uh, during the course of that 15 years, about halfway through it, I had a kind of a moment of clarity in my life, if you will. And on June 10th, 1996, I learned that my father died. And once I learned that he had died and he had left this planet, basically knowing me only as a thief and a crook and a liar, I decided I was going to change the course of my destiny. And that's exactly what I did. Seven years later, I walked out of prison in 2003. I was released to a homeless shelter. And within five years, I had built a company with $20 million in revenue, which you mentioned there that company was selected as Inc. Magazine's one of their fastest growing companies in America. Sold that company, began doing speaking and training, and I wrote uh, my first book, was called The Upside of Fear, as you mentioned. And my new book coming out is The Power of Consistency. And so, really, my story really is one of struggle and prosperity and redemption, but, you know, really about overcoming challenges. And I think that's really relevant to entrepreneurs and business owners and sales professionals because, you know, to make it in business, to make it in sales, you're going to face adversity, whether it's a bad economy, a cheap competitor, or, you know, whatever the situation is. And one of the key things we have to understand as a successful entrepreneur or sales professional is to be able to face adversity and actually thrive and prosper in the face of those challenges. Wow. Back 15 years ago, when you were, did you ever realize where you will be today? You know, there came a time where I did, and that's a really good question, because when my dad died in 1996, at the time I was 32 years old, 
I had a three-year-old son that I had abandoned. I wouldn't see the streets until I was 40 years old. I had seven years left to serve. And when I made that decision to change the course of my destiny, I started reading all the personal development and self-help books that I could find and started reading all the great writers and thinkers. Uh, You mentioned Stephen Covey of Seven Habits and and Tony Robbins and Wayne Dyer and Socrates and the Bible and you name it. I mean, I was reading everything, trying to learn and figure out a success formula. You know, what are successful people doing? Successful people in life, successful people in business. And what I learned as Emerson wrote, that we essentially become what we think about all day long. So what I did in 1996 is I wrote out for me what a perfect life would look like. And I took that list, Tim, I wrote it out, and I stuck it on my cell wall with toothpaste. And over the next seven years, I began to visualize that life, imagine what it would be like to be a wonderful father and have successful companies and, you know, income and all those different things. And over those seven years, I got so emotionally connected to that dream began to take actions that were consistent with that dream. While I was in the penitentiary, I got my GED. I got a bachelor's degree. I got a master's degree in business. I began to change the way that I think. And when I changed the way I thought, it changed the way I felt. When I changed the way I felt, I changed the way I acted. And when I changed the way I acted, you know, I got better results. It wasn't wasn't rocket science. But I saw this life of mine years before it actually happened. I saw it while I was sitting in a prison cell. So on one hand, I guess I was pleasantly surprised, but I really wasn't surprised once I made that decision to consciously map out what a, what a life for me would look like, you know, Emerson said, you know, to map out a plan and follow it to an end requires courage. And, you know, that's true for all of us, to, to visualize what it's going to be like in the end and then see it through, you know. And so I saw this life, you know, many years before it actually happened. Wow. That's awesome. What a journey. In today's environment, I guess, a lot of small business owners who are starting out or even medium-sized businesses who's trying to struggle, where do you see the economy going itself? And I'm going kind of left field, but I'm kind of going back to where you are and how that's going to fit that in. But if we look at the economy today, does that have any impact on having a person to become successful? No, I, I don't think it does ultimately. You know, we all have challenges that we face, but I believe ultimately that our success in life and business is a reflection of what we choose to do about whatever bad thing happens, in this case, the economy. You know, the bottom line is, if the economy meant that we could not be successful, then nobody in this economy would be successful. But that's just not true. There are many, many companies that are thriving and growing, earning good margins and good, you know, good earnings. So there are success stories out there, regardless of the challenge. But I will tell you this. Things are getting better. I don't know if you heard, you heard this morning that the unemployment rate was down a couple of tenths of a point. Several hundred new thousand jobs were created. Things are getting better. And I'll tell you, Tim, I think things are getting better because people, you know, the economy is one big self-fulfilling prophecy just like the rest of us, just like every element of our life. And the truth is is that people in 08 and 09, we kind of all had a, a shock about the economy as things changed uh, with the housing situation. And the truth is people are getting used to this new reality. There's 8.5% unemployment, that, but that means 90, uh, 92.5% of us are still working, you know, and so we can choose to focus on the opportunities and the good things, and we can focus on the fear and the negative things. But things are getting better. The economy is getting better little by little. I believe we've turned the corner, and a big part of that has to do with people have just gotten used to it. But you don't have to have a great economy. Listen, we, in 2009, in the midst of the recession, in 08 and 09, our company was thriving, and as I mentioned, was selected by Inc. Magazine as one of the fastest growing in America. Well, everybody wasn't growing that fast. The reason that we did is because of the decisions that we made about how we're going to respond to the bad economy. Wow. When you started out, what was your number one challenge? I mean, I know you read a lot of self-help books. Is there any one particular thing that you felt that was a challenge for you to take that first step? You have the yeah. knowledge now, since you have the knowledge and you starting and starting, what was your number one challenge? Well, I guess first on a personal level, while I was sitting in the penitentiary for seven years, I had to change the way that I think. I mean, my mind was so full of negative, disempowering thoughts. But from a more practical perspective, in 2003, I was in a homeless shelter. You know, my biggest challenge for growing a business was capital, you know, like it is for all of us. And, you know, one of the things that I encourage entrepreneurs and business owners and to think about is that when you start that business, the key thing to keep in mind is a little concept that uh, that IBM was built on. When Thomas Watson Sr. started IBM, although they were known for their technology, his driving philosophy was that nothing happens until something gets sold. 
And so what I tell new people starting out of business, you know, our company, I grew up, uh, the first company I started was a heating and air conditioning company, of all things, which I knew nothing about. But we started that company in our living room and drove it to $2 million in sales in our first year. And the way we did that was by going out and canvassing for leads and then writing business on those leads, closing deals. And so I think it's the most important thing. A lot of times, small businesses, we get caught up in having beautiful cards and we get caught up in having the right office furniture and the right lamp on our desk. And the bottom line is nothing happens until something gets sold. So don't worry about, you know, whether or not you got the perfect computer. Just go out there and sell your product, sell your service. Demonstrate to others why why it's worth, you know, doing business with your company and to demonstrate value, build relationships, and close business. Everything else is going to take care of itself if you generate revenue. So that's the biggest challenge I think we all face is just focusing on sales and marketing. You got to generate leads and you got to generate business. You can fix the office chair later. <laughs> so and when you get to that point, you look at motivating. How do you, you know, I can see if you start from the ground up, but think of a regular person who's starting out, a person who's struggling, they're in business, and they get consumed with, okay, I need to get financing, I need to get capital, I need to do this. And you brought it in perfectly and said they just need to continue to do what they do best at selling and closing deals. But how do you keep that motivation going when you have you face with all of these things that's attacking you as a small business owner, just overwhelming you. Is there any way that you can take yourself out of that moment and put yourself in another box that you can be, if that's making sense, that you can just be yourself and be the business person you are without having the other stressors in life attacking you? Yeah, no, that's really a good point. My whole business development and sales process really is a three-part process. And the first component of that is what I call getting the mind right, creating a prosperity consciousness. And what I do is I have a four-step process called FEAR. The FEAR stands for focus, emotional commitment, action, and responsibility. What that really means is you've got to get focused and write out your dreams, understand what you want out of life and business, and then you've got to get emotionally committed to it in the second step. And the way you do that uh, is what I call a quiet time ritual, taking a few minutes every single day to review the dream, uh, to review the, you know, where you want to be in the end. Uh, Dr. Covey talks about beginning with the end in mind and having a clear vision of how your business is going to look a year from now or two years from now. I think that's critically important because we are going to have those difficult challenges, those difficult moments that you're talking about. But the bottom line, if you condition yourself every single day and get deeply emotionally committed, you will find the strength and determination, you know, to deal with whatever those distractions are, which brings me to the third step in the fear process, action. You know, you got focus, emotional commitment, and action. And one of the things that I tell business folks, entrepreneurs, salespeople, is that when it comes to action, the thing to keep in mind is that the confused mind says no. Most of us have a list of 50 different things on it that we need to do. Well, the problem with that is that very often we get overwhelmed and confused, and so we do nothing, and we just kind of sit there and get caught up in the anxiety of it. What I tell people is take that list, look at the top one or two things on that list, and put the rest of it away and just focus on the top one or two things that you can focus on in that moment and take those consistent actions. They don't have to be big, huge actions. They just have to be consistent actions. A lot of times people think we're successful in business because, you know, one big deal or one big day. And the truth is we're successful by doing the little things over and over and over again. So when you think about action, you've got to think about consistent action. And the fourth component of that process is responsibility. We have to accept responsibility for our decisions about the challenges we face. You know, bad things happen to good people, Tim. Everybody has problems. The bottom line is our life and our business are not a reflection of our problems. Our life and our businesses are a reflection of what we decide to do about our problems. You know what I mean? So we've got to take 100% responsibility. And by using that four-step process, focus, emotional commitment, action, and responsibility, we can have the amount of focus we need to accomplish our daily tasks, and also the internal strength, the big dream inside, that will help us get through those short-term obstacles. Wow. Talking about your company itself and the services you provide, can you go in a little bit more detail about your current company right now and what type of, yeah, company. Type of companies? Absolutely. The, I do. I write uh, books, obviously, The Upside of Fear we talked about. The Power of Consistency is my next book coming out, which is really a sales and business development I do a lot of motivational speaking just because the nature of my story, people are often interested about that. But the primary focus is I work with individuals and organizations doing sales and business development. We do 
live events around the country. People can get more information on those at weldonlong.com. And they're one part rock show. I, we bring in, it's like a rock show. I play the drums, the lights, it's crazy. It's one part rock show, one part personal development, you know, positive thinking, good attitude stuff, and then one part sales training and business development. And so we do those events around the country. We also do live weekly television shows. One of the biggest challenges we all face in business is consistency. That's what this new book is all about. And so what I started doing a few years ago is we started doing live weekly TV shows on Prosperity TV Network, which is, they can find out more about that as well at uh, weldonlong.com. But it's live TV shows, live streaming shows that we do every week. Our people can call in and say, you know, hey, what do I need to do here? What do I need to do there? And it's live weekly encouragement, live weekly coaching, live weekly training and helps keep, you know, keep us on focus, on task, moving ahead. So, and, you know, we have obviously DVD and CD sets and sales training stuff. So, but that's where I spend most of my time now, writing books and speaking on business development and sales development. Uh, in fact, I was at a local car dealership here. I live in Colorado Springs, Colorado. We were down working with a sales team at a local car dealership and, and just helping them to get their mind right, you know, to keep that positive focus, to get their sales process right, to extend themselves to their clients, and then, of course, to consistently implement those principles on a regular basis, and they, you know, they watch our weekly shows. So that's what we spend the majority of our time now, helping small companies and big companies and, and individuals, you know, really achieve their success to create that life of wealth and success and prosperity uh, by following that three-part process. Wow. With the sales force, if I take, for example, the car dealership you just loved, if I worked in the car dealership with AutoNation for many years, and I know the mentality that you have from the old heads who've been there forever in the day, and then the new ones coming in who are excited but don't know how to get there. What challenge did you run into when you went to that dealership with that type of mentality? Because you have management here on one end, you have the people who's been there longer than management for 15 or 20 years, and you have the new people coming in and people in between. How did you come in and kind of wrap your hands around that and say, hey, how this is how this is where we need to go? Right. Great question. You know, I believe that there are certain universal truths in life and universal principles that whether it's old school, new school, or management, or somewhere in between, you know, there are some basic guiding principles that guide our sales career and our professional life. And one of the things, and I'm sure you've heard it, you know, one of the old things you hear a lot from salespeople is that old saying that buyers are liars. And I'm going to tell you something, that makes me absolutely crazy because buyers are not liars. Buyers are scared to death of getting ripped off again. Because every salesperson they dealt with before has taken advantage of them or promised them things that didn't happen. And so when we meet with our prospects, a lot of times they're gun shot because they've had that experience. And I believe salespeople that will turn to the prospect and say, all buyers are liars. What they're really doing is just shirking their responsibility. They don't want to take responsibility for their relationship with their prospects, and they're blaming the prospects. The truth is we have a responsibility to extend ourselves emotionally and professionally to our prospects. Tolstoy said that the true meaning of life is service. You know, serving our customers, serving our community, serving other people. And the bottom line is when salespeople can focus on serving and not worried about whether or not their prospect has said something that may or may not be true, they just need to take responsibility for extending themselves and serving their customers and understand that buyers are not liars. Buyers are scared to death because salespeople have taken advantage of so many people. And so I think that's one of those fundamental truths. And whether it's a manager, whether it's a new salesperson or an old school people, I think they can understand that common denominator, that universal truth. And so it's, when I'm working with groups that are very diverse like that, I try to focus on the things we can all agree on. What are the universal truths about success? You know, what are the universal laws of success? And most people can agree on those. Wow. Any particular challenges you're seeing, for example, of course, if it's a dealership, is a large organization that has a different mentality. When you come in to meet with a small organization from this uh, business who, say, have uh, 10 people in the offices and three or four outside reps, what do you tell a person with an organization like that? You know, this is a good lead, this is a bad lead. Now, and I agree with you regarding buyers or liars, but to motivate them, say, hey, give this a chance. What do you would tell a person like that? Well, that's a good question as well. And, and what I tell people is that, you know, so much of our success in life is a reflection of what's in our head. If you imagine for a second that if I had a box of motorcycle parts and everything I needed to build a motorcycle was in that box, if I pulled all the components and the parts out of that box and I put them together, 
you know, what are the odds I'm going to accidentally bake a cake? You can't bake a cake out of motorcycle parts. And that box is a metaphor for our mind, you know. Whatever's in there is eventually coming out. It comes out in the form of a million different decisions and choices and beliefs. And so I think it's critically important for sales uh, organizations, business people, entrepreneurs of any size company to take a look at what's in your box. What do you fundamentally believe about your leads? What do you fundamentally believe about the economy? Because most of the time, you know, we end up proving ourselves right one way or the other. Whenever I'm doing a training, and it can be in front of 50 people or 500 people, I typically will say, you know, half of you in this room think that the economy is going to drive your business, and you're right. The other half of the room thinks that they're going to create their own destiny. And guess what? They're right, too, because whatever we believe is going to happen typically tends to, to be reinforced in our reality. So I would caution people when you talk about, for example, you know, the leads this, the leads, the, you know, listen, leads are opportunities. I believe all that we're entitled to as a professional, as an entrepreneur, as a salesperson is an opportunity. Just give me a chance. Let me go in there, and I can take a bad lead and make it good. And the way I can do that is by serving my prospects, by extending myself, and identifying what I call the satisfaction gap. You know, where are they now with their life, whatever product it is, and where would they like to be, and what can I do to bridge that gap? But I'm a big believer that you get an opportunity in life, and you got to take it and run with it. Don't second guess the lead. Don't second guess anything. And as far as, you know, all the distractions of a small business owner, again, as I, as I mentioned earlier, Stay focused on selling, generating leads, and selling, and generating leads and selling. Far too often in small business, we end up in business, but we really maybe we came from, I do a lot of con consulting with the heating and air conditioning companies in the country. A lot of times the heating and air conditioning companies are owned by guys who, you know, were technicians and installers, and they end up owning the business, but they've never had any formal sales or business training. And so it's really difficult for those people sometimes to realize the value of selling and lead generation. And so to me, that's got to be the focus, especially in a small business in a tough economy. you got to be out there outperforming your competition when it comes to service, lead generation, and sales. Great. When a company, I know we're at the end of the broadcast, we give company information on how to contact you. When you go into a small organization like the heat and air conditioner company, if they want to give you a call, say, hey, I want to contact, I want to have you to come in and talk to my people, is there particular type packages that you offer? Hey, this I do sales training here. I do motivational training here. What type of training in the box of sales training is a box that you give them? Say, hey, this is what I offer. You can kind of go in detail about that. Yeah, we've got uh, several different programs and product lines, obviously. The one that I've been spending most of my time on lately is the power of consistency. And business owners and sales professionals can go to our website, which is weldonlong.com, and, and watch some videos there. And there's a, a CD and a DVD set with workbooks that are designed to work people through the three-part process of getting the mind right, getting the sales right, and getting the consistency right. And so what we do is we offer these CD and DVD packages, for example, and a workbook, and folks go through and work through the process, and then they can subscribe if they choose Prosperity TV, which are our weekly TV shows, so that we can have that ongoing coaching relationship for them. So that's one part of our business. We also do, like I said, live one-day sales training events. I do five or six events around the country every year with Tom Hopkins, who is a legendary sales trainer, and Tom and I do events. Uh, we just did one in Austin, Texas uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I will come into the mornings and teach, you know, the get the mind right part, and then Tom will teach his sales process. So your listeners can get a lot of information on that at our, at our website. Again, it's Weldon, W-E-L-D-O-N, Long, L-O-N-G, WeldonLong.com. My books are on there, CDs, DVDs, live public events we're doing, and just a lot of different information about some of the things that we're working on. Is a particular person in your office they need to contact if they go on the website, all the information is spelled out, or is there a number they Yeah, a lot of it's spelled out. Our phone number, I'll give you my phone number, and Amy Newman hands a lot of our business development. Actually, there's several people in our office that can, but I think Amy was the young lady that you spoke with. But they can call us at 719-304-5300, 719-304-5300. And ask for Amy Newman, and she can answer any questions about speaking opportunities, business development training, just anything that one of your listeners may have a question about. Okay. In closing, if, you, if a person, I know you've been through a lot in your life, what can you say to a person who is at that stage where you began this birth, this idea of where you're going to be today? What can you tell a person who is in that same situation 
who's at, in the halfway house or who's homeless have this passion in their heart. Hey, I want to do something and I need to get this step to in order to get out of it. Is there something you can say to a person in that particular yeah. in their life? Yeah, there's two things. I do a lot of work, a lot of service work. I work in the prisons, and I go into the prisons in Colorado and the federal prisons very often and, and speak with inmates and share my story and how I overcame kind of those challenges. But the main thing is that I like to tell people is that wherever you are in life, you're going to have one more chance at least. There's no guarantee you're going to have a second or third chance, but everybody's got one more chance in them. And the key thing is you've got to capitalize on that chance. You've got to take massive, massive transformational action. And sometimes that's hard. You know, it's kind of like breaking out of an orbit. But the bottom line is think about whatever it is that you want to do and just write down the first thing that you need to do to get there, not the 500 things that you'll ultimately need to do, just one thing that if you did every single day would move you closer to your dream and then just focus on doing that one thing. You know, there's an ancient Japanese proverb that says a thousand-mile journey begins with a single step. You know, a thousand-mile journey doesn't begin with 10 steps, you know, or the 50th step. It starts with one step. And so that's the key, I think, is just taking some action towards our goals, no matter how small it is, no matter how seemingly insignificant. And I would encourage your readers, if they are listeners, if they get a chance to pick up a copy of The Upside of Fear. That's uh, the, the story of my life and how I overcame that. And the little tiny things that I had to do on a consistent basis to break my life out of that crazy cycle that I was in. And people got to know, Tim, more than anything else, there is hope. There is a brighter day tomorrow. You know, James Allen said that what lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. And so we've got to focus on what lies within us. Wow. Well, I really appreciate your time. I appreciate you coming out, talking to us, and I'm sure it's going to be played over and over to sales professionals. Again, Mr. Weldon Long, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you spending this moment with us. And again, to contact you, just go to your website at weldonlong.com. Yep, weldonlong.com. That's right. And if they wanted to reach out to you, they can give Amy Newman a call. And her number again is? 719-304-5300. And you have an email for Amy? Yes, it's Amy. It's A-I-M-E-E, A-I-M-E-E, at WeldonLong.com. Great. I really appreciate it again. I appreciate your time and look forward to talking to you in the future. Pleasure with mine, Tim. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye.